The idea behind a gib adjustment is to correct or remove any sideward movement in the slide plate. Remove the cutting head. Remove the shutoff cam. Remove the two 6mm Allen screws from the feed block and let it hang down out of the way. Loosen the 8mm jam nuts and the 2mm Allen gib screws. Remove the slide plate. The gib screws go through the slide plate and seat in the gib wedge. The gib wedge, when adjusted properly, puts pressure on the gearbox rails. Make sure that the gib wedge and slide plate dovetails are clean. You can use products like WD-40 to spray on and wipe off. Again, be sure that the slide plate and its components are clean. Clean the rails of the gearbox. Using two 5mm pins, measure the distance between the rails on the gearbox. Place them in the dovetail of the rails. Using a digital caliper, position the measuring arms against the 5mm pins. Take your reading. An easy method in measuring is to zero out your caliper after you get your reading. That way, when you measure the opposing side, you will have the actual difference between the two sides of the gearbox rails. There cannot be three thousandths or more difference between the rails. This will prevent you from doing a proper gib adjustment. If you do not have the 5mm pins, you can still measure the rail distance by using the flat part of the caliper arms. Insert them into the dovetails, get your measurement, zero out, go to the opposing side of the gearbox, take your measurement there. Put the gib wedge in place and install the slide plate onto the gearbox. Slide it up and down the rails to assure that the wedge is seated against the gib screws. Using the micro switch as a reference point, Line up the gib screws with this point to make your adjustments. Begin with an adjustment of the gib screw closest to the back of the plate, followed by moving the slide plate up and down the rails. There should be a little bit of resistance. Do this for all gib screws. You can use a little spray lube on the rails. Do not use grease or similar thick lubes. This would attract chips and debris. With the back of the slide plate lined up with the inlet of the lead nut, turn the clutch handle to bring in the feed block. Install the two 6mm Allen screws Firm down, do not tighten them at this point. Turn the clutch handle to move the side plate out 2 inches. Turn the lathe so that you have a clear view of the opposing side of the gearbox where the feed screw exits. The feed screw must be properly aligned so that it's in the middle of the lead nut. To align the feed screw, loosen the two 6mm Allen screws. Move the feed block and observe the feed screw. Let's recap. The slide plate has its preliminary adjustments. The feed screw has been centered. It is time for the final slide plate adjustment. Turn the clutch handle and feed the slide plate all the way in. From this point, grasp the slide plate on both the Gibbs screw side and the opposing side. Twist it to see if there is any movement. If not, 
advance the slide plate assembly a half inch and test again. Use the micro switch as a reference point. If there is movement, adjust the gib screws close to the micro switch. Do this for the whole range of motion for the slide plate. When completed, turn the clutch handle to feed the slide plate in. Be sure that there is no skipping or any looseness. Again, if the slide plate moves in with no skipping or looseness, we are ready to firm down the jam nuts by using an 8mm open end wrench and also holding the 2mm Allen screws. Remember, these do not have to be overly tight, just firm them down. If you do experience skipping or looseness of the slide plate, refer to the troubleshooting guide or contact the ProCut Service Department.